Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 7 in the how to program in C Sharp course. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at something quite similar to the for loop. It's called the while loop and uh, it's really quite useful for a bunch of things. As always, if you have any questions throughout this video, head over to forum.brackies.com where I, among many others, are ready to answer your questions. Cool, so as always, I've opened up Xamarin Studio and I'm just quickly going to walk uh, you through my solution to the problem that I uh, suggested you solve last time. So the um, challenge from last time's video was to loop through the numbers 1 to 100 and print out all the even numbers. And uh, the way I've solved this, it, solved this is using a basic for loop where I create a variable called i and set it equal to 1. I say that this, uh, this loop should run until i is less, uh, while i is less than or equal to 100. And we want to increment i every time uh, we loop through. And then I just check if i is evenly dividable by 2. So this percentage sign here is an operator that will check if, uh, for the remainder of a division. So if i is equally divided by 2, it will result in 0. And if it does, I simply write out the uh, number and separate them with a comma and a space. So in order to see this in action, let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see that it prints out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and it goes all the way up to 100. Cool. So let's just uh, delete this for now, leave the console.read key, and let's delve into the world of while loops. So a while loop can perform many of the same operations that a for loop can, such as counting uh, numbers. Let's say we wanted to print out the numbers 1 through 10. Then we would create an integer. Uh, we could just call this i. Stick to the same naming convention as before. We could equal this to 1. Then we could create a while loop called while. And then we put in a condition. Say while i is less than or equal to 10. And then just like the for loop and the if statement, we open up the brackets. And in here, by the way, um, I just quickly want you uh, want to notice that you can also put the brackets down here if you find that easier to read. Um, many uh, newer developers does. I simply just like them up here. But it's um, really something that programmers can argue about for hours and hours. So inside of this while loop, we can again simply say console.writeline and then put in the i. But... This is where many, many developers, uh, beginner developers, go wrong with the while loops. They think, okay, I've created this i, I've set uh, a condition, and I've written out, let's go ahead and hit play. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not where you go ahead and hit play. Because what we've created right here is what is called an infinite loop. And infinite loops are ugly as hell. They uh, will often or almost definitely cause your program to crash. Because currently we don't increment i. i will always remain 1, and therefore it will never go above 10. And so we will keep out writing lines into infinity, and that's really not what we want. So what we want to do instead is below the console.write line, we want to remember to increment i. And uh, by simply doing simply doing i++, plus plus, we simply say that i should plus equals 1, however you want to write it. So now when we play, you can see that it prints out the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10. And then it exits the loop, and we are done with our main method. Cool. But this uh, is, is what you can do with a while loop to emulate a for loop. You can also do some other things. Let's say that uh, we know a person called Tom. And Tom uh, knows his basic math and he likes to play with dices. So he knows that if he has a dice with the numbers 1 through 6 and he throws this, he has a 1 in 6 uh, chance of, getting, uh, of rolling a 6. 
But he wants to test this theory out in practice. So what he does is he starting th- starts throwing his dice, and uh, he notates he, no- he writes down every number that he gets. So uh, on the first hit he might get a two, on the second he might get a four, and then on the third try he uh, might get a, a six. So he writes down two, four, six, and then he writes out that took three tries. But he wants to do this a bunch of times so he can test test out uh, how how many times this um, how many tries it actually takes him to do this. So instead of throwing a dice each time, he's asked us to, he's asked us to write a program for him, and this is where while loops are incredibly useful. So let's try and write this out in code. So first off, we're going to need some variables. We're going to need an integer. And we're going to call this number of attempts. And we're going to default this to zero because we start out by having attempted anything. Then we run, uh, want to write out another integer. And we are simply going to call this um, attempt. This is going to store the uh, single attempt. And we're going to default that to zero also. Then what we want to do is we want to say while attempt is not equal to 6, we want to do something. So while we haven't hit a 6, we want to first off set number of attempts, or I'm sorry, we want to first off set attempt to a random value. So we haven't had a hit a 6. Let's set it to a new random value. Let's roll again. So in order to do this, we say attempt equals. And this is where we want to get some kind of number generator. Remember in one of the previous videos, I showed you how to generate numbers at random. So if you don't know how to do this, or if you find the next part here a bit complicated, please go ahead, go back and watch it there. So up here in the beginning of our method, we are gonna do random and we are gonna call this number generator or maybe just number gen, and we're going to equal this to a new random. Then down here, we will say that attempt equals number gen dot next. And this will give us a random number between these two values. And we're going to put in one because it's inclusive and then seven because that's exclusive. So that will give us numbers between one and six. And uh, what we can then do is we can uh, set the number of attempts uh, to one more. So we can simply increment the number of attempts. And let's also write out what um, what uh, he actually rolled on this particular attempt. So let's write out console.write line. And we can maybe say uh, Tom rolled a rolled and then we're simply going to write it out like this. So we're going to plus attempt uh, and then maybe a dot. And remember the uh, ending semicolon there and a uh, ending parentheses also. Whoops. Uh, and a plus sign there. Cool. So Tom rolled, we insert the attempt and then simply finish it off with a dot. And then we increment the number of attempts. And then when we are done, Oops. When we exit out of this while loop, it's because our attempt hit a 6. So down here, we can write out console.write line. It took Tom, um, and then we can uh, insert number of attempts, and then plus attempts. So we are going to write out how many attempts it took Tom to roll a 6. So let's just say to roll a 6. Now let's save this. Make sure you don't have an infinite loop that we are doing something with the attempt and we are here. We are not simply incrementing it but we are getting a random number. So let's try this out by hitting play. And you can see this, that here he was actually quite unlucky. It took him 16 attempts to roll a 6. First 4, then 4, then 1, 5, 3, blah, 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 until he wrote a 6 on his 16th 
attempt. Let's try this again. So here it took him 11 attempts to roll a 6. Here it took him only 3 attempts, first a 3, then a 3, and then finally a 6. And uh, you can just keep on doing this as long as, as you want to, and it's now much easier to write down all of these results than simply uh, rolling a dice each time. So that's a, a good introduction, I think, to practical problem solving using while loops. You can also uh, do something else with while loops. Uh, you can do what is called a do while loop. It is used, uh, not as common though, uh, where you simply write like this, do. And then we put in, I'm just gonna delete this down here. So uh, you, the syntax looks like this. Here. So what you do is you first do some kind of action and then you check if a condition is met and if it is, it loops back and does the action again. Uh, where with a, an ordinary while loop, it will check if the uh, condition is met before it does the first iteration. So a do while loop is basically, um, you're basically sure that it will do at least one iteration. So that's the simple difference there. I don't think I need to demonstrate. Uh, that's really all you need to do. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. I think it was kind of short actually and I quite like that. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video We're gonna, where I think we're going to be taking a look at methods, which is really awesome. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.